Namaskar, everybody. It's just past eight, and we are on the very just today of Bengal volunteers. As usual, I'm on to talk with, with you. And today we are going to concentrate on a very unusual subject of Tantra. We have stated this Tantra as a voice of humankind. And we have with us, we are blessed with the presence of a very unusual person. Why is unusual? I'd like to say it. He's a person of versatility. And apart from being a professor of computers and engineering, Coast of Shandar is also engrossed with the study of Tantras, of a paranormal world, which is quite unusual to us, and also lots of the others. So welcome, Gostop, to a Bengal Wonder Show. Thank you for can having you hear me. Can you hear me, Gostop? Thank you. Yes, thank I can. Yeah, thank you. Also, it's indeed a pleasure for me to talk to you on this occasion. Well, um, it's a pleasure of mine as well. Since if, in spite of being a student of hardcore science, you were quite engrossed with this discipline. And I think I have not made anything wrong while expressing you. I, have I made anything wrong? No, not at all. Okay, thank you. Well, now, Tantra to us, the human beings, the common person, is something an unusual subject. To us, it's, it's quite radical, violent, violent, valorous, and deals with an unusual world that is beyond the human senses. It's beyond our senses to even inconceive it. It's inconceivable to us. See, all these records, Tantra is a very unusual, is a very special subject in the entire interpretation of the cultivation of Hindu Dharma and its Charcha. So, Kosto would like to know from you, as a very unknown man, what the Tantra deals of, please. What the Tantra? Deals with, in reality, deals. Okay. okay. Though it is said that Saram Mitam Vachamiti Vagmita, but there exists no short answer to this question if i go if i try to answer it in a very concise way so i have to take the refuge of sanskrit vyakarana where we deal with the study of the etymological aspect or the morphological aspect of the words and there the word tantra is explained as tanum trayate iti tantra which means that whatever liberates the tanu, that means the body. Now, what body it liberates? Our physical body, our mental manifestation, our thoughts, our memories, how to deal with it, how to channelize it. Tantra deals with it only. Now, as we try to speak about what Tantra actually deals with, it deals with the proper merge of wisdom and action. And it dates back to the Vedas as well. Tantra is not different than Veda until it is known as the Bauddha Tantra. And we don't deal with that at all. Because Bauddha is a Nastikya Darshan, we should not consider ourselves or burden ourselves with that topic. What is Bauddha Tantra? We only are going to focus on the Veda Sammata Tantra, where the Tantra uh, accepts and acknowledges the Apaurusheyatta of the Veda. Tantra does acknowledge the Apaurusheyatva of the Vedas. Where our Lord Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, he said very rightly, Ved Purana kane shunta hai, tantra hate nate kotte hai. Which means that we need to listen, we need to be mentored for the Vedas and the Puranas and the Smriti Shastras. But for the Tantra, you have to deal with the actions. You have to perform it. It should be hands-on. 
so if we analyze this thing analyze this concept we see very clearly that 80% of the vedic literature deal with the karma kanda the 20% of the vedic literature is the gyana kanda so where the majority of uh, the vedic literature concerns itself with the action the kriya kanda the karma kanda uh, the closest english synonym to kriya kanda is ritual but i don't prefer personally the word ritual or rites i prefer the word karma kanda so when the vedas are dealing with the karma kanda we can say in a very broad manner that it is tantra itself why because it is also a way it can be considered as a way to liberate some of our manifestations our existence when we are coming to tantra it combines the both the pure way of tantra now what in the technical aspects we don't call it tantra at all we call it the agamas now what is going to be the definition of the agamas it goes like agata shiva vaktrebhya gate gatascha girijamukhe matam shri vasudevascha tasmad agamuchate or tadeva agamuchate whatever it is both are correct agata shiva vaktrebhya which was preached by all the five heads of lord shiva and it was preached to whom goddess parvati herself matam shri vasudevasya and where lord vishnu is constantly uh, overseeing or he is like a superintendent of the knowledge he is like okay yes i approve it i approve it i approve it which is approved by lord vishnu himself that is agama that is the tantra from that we got the tantras now though we have a very gross understanding of tantra in today's world in the mass of the human population that is completely the uh, angle that has been imposed on us by the major media houses nothing more than that that is not our understanding that was imposed on us if we see not very far away um, 50 to 60 years back just as regarded today are the vedanta acharyas the vedanta tirthas smriti tirthas kavya tirthas um, vidyavaridhis similarly there was a term for tantra acharya tantra kula chudamani tantra shiromani but with the grace of today's big media houses we got a very gross understanding of tantra today even 50 60 years back also we have we had tantra acharyas so tantra was well, that, well, a discipline of study well that yes? was that was uh, with the growth of this uncanny concept of secularism in india this entire study of this not of only that no 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 not not only secularism it was something something came up where a very gross representation of tantra has been imposed on the masses what which what? gave what? which what? gave what? which gave the audacity to spielberg to make a film of indiana jones and the temple of doom which was a worldwide hit and our own amrish puri played the villain in that film hmm. so he got that audacity from us only where tantra has been uh, visualized or represented in a very uncanny manner and no, my starting my from that okay now hmm. my question is why has it been gimmicked why has it been disparaged why why what can be the main reason for demeaning to demean tantra it is not uh, i don't think that uh, it has been very uh, deliberately done 
because uh, if we say that then we have to consider that deliberately in all of the puranas in all of the 18 puranas in all of the shruti shastras the major god the major deity of rigveda lord indra was demeaned several times whenever we listen to the name of lord indra today what do we think about him he is a guy who is not at all worthy of being the king of uh, the gods and he is sitting above uh, on the heaven in a throne and he leads a very lavish life and he is a drunkard and a womanizer that kind of stuff but in the vedic texts when we see the lord indra is equivalent to god himself the word indra the pad indra pad lord indra is none other than brahma himself he is the one true identity when speaking about him uh, maharshi grit samant is saying uh, in the indra sukta yo jata prathama manasvi nam who was first born among all of the intellectuals of this universe sajana sa indra all of you people who are mortal who are living in this world who are going to die few days later you know him as indra and he is the one who is worth knowing from that we have declined to to teach lord indra a lesson lord krishna is lifting up giri govardhan in his pinky finger so i am not questioning the smriti shastras i don't have the audacity but something went south there i don't know that i don't think anybody can explain it in a very particular manner that what went south that lord indra was demeaned in uh, all of the smriti shastras like that so tantra is like that only but the main stream of tantra is so deep rooted into the blood of the indians and all of the human kind not only in india even beyond that that we can how much you try to demean it how much you try to misinterpret it you cannot do that it is not possible because so whatever what? you do whatever you do even a brahmana Uh, first after getting his upanayana when he starts his sandhya vandanam that is also inside uh, the domain in the regime of tantra into the reign of tantra uh, in today's bengal even a baby a child he is a child when he is getting his upanayana sanskar when after getting his upanayana sanskar he is not being taught to do to perform his sandhya vandanam with an achmani patra or a pancha matra we used the kosha kushi yeah where from that vessel is coming from that's a tantric setup that is a tantric instrument we know how to use that every year in the day of mahalaya thousands of people are performing pitritarpana using that kosha kushi that is also tantra so whatever people are whatever uh, anyone should do you can never demean or never get even close to demerit the valor of tantra the power of tantra how much deep rooted the concepts of tantra are in our blood so kosamath uh, ne sir let to know from you what the relevance of tantra or what the relation of tantra to bengal we are aware that bengal happens to be or Uh, occupies a very important position in the tantra with the across the globe so i'd like to know from you what the relevance of bengal to tantra in the tantra shastra there are three major regions uh, all of the bhumandala the complete geographical space that we consider we know today is divided into three portions into three regions named as ashwakranta rathakranta and vishnukranta and these three are uh, north india south india and bengal and the rest of the eastern zone from vindhya parvata vindhya is the center the pivot point 
and from that rathakranta ashvakranta vishnukranta so when we are talking about these three regions these three regions have their own locus points rathakranta have the locus has the locus point of kashmir that is the kashmir achar ashvakranta has the locus kerala achar kerala and the vishnukranta is the, has the locus gauda achar gaud banga so banga desha is the locus point of vishnukranta region and whatever is mentioned for the gauda achar should be followed in all of the eastern region of india so in the when we are talking about bengal in tan, in the regime of tantra then we should understand that as a base point as a standardization of culture as a standardization of the various different karma kandic uh, procedures a uh, discipline of actions whatever bengal will do should be followed throughout all of the vishnukranta region that is the main significance of bengal in the regime of tantra very nice very nice now it are just me to to pose a very difficult and political question to you a political Hey. Ah, something political, something quite political. You, you cannot avoid anything political in this world, I think. Okay. Oh, hey, what is when Let's you are living in a now, take away so when you are living in a state craft, in a state, in a nation, how much you like or dislike it, you are going to you have to pay the taxes and everything, and you have a political outlook. It cannot be avoided. And this has okay. been stated by now by, by Muhammad Otil. Okay. Yes, true, true, true. Okay. true, true, true. In Let's try. Indian, I have to get at the same. Not is an okay. So okay. my question okay. is now: In all the recent experiences we have found, Kashmir has been a hot bit of Islamic terrorism, while Malangam area or the Kerala has been turned into the next grave of the Hindus of Islamic terrorism. Since I have found in the recent notes that the number of Hindus, even in Lumadi, the village, the ancestor of the Lavadi Shankaracharya, is dwindling heavily. The Hindus are kind of falling down. Now, if Kerala and Kashmir and Tantra, and as far as Tantra is concerned, are on the bottom point, are on the verge of collapse, then the only place that remains still now is Bengal, Gaurachar, Bow, isn't it? So, do you think that our adversaries are planning, are targeting these two regions very, very uh, strategically? Since Trust me, trust me, I have been asking the same question for long that why these three spaces? Yeah, there will be anything. India is not a small country. It's a yeah. very large and vast country. And there are Certainly. more, there are more states, there are more cities that could be hampered if we think like our enemies. i am not talking about hindus as well, at all because tantra does not concern it, itself with hinduism only as i said that it's a voice of human kind it combines the action with wisdom it teaches us to control the kaya mano vakya so it is But, for everyone well uh, well posto uh, is the wisdom of tantra is your wisdom also but as for the adversaries are concerned of the hindus they collude or they combine tantra and dharma into a single fold isn't it mm -hmm. sorry as far as the adversaries of the hinduism is concerned the enemies of hinduism is concerned they are found to combine the tantra and the hindu dharma into a single fold they do not consider tantra as anything or something uh, uh... I, i told it at the very beginning that no matter whoever try whatever they mm. want uh, they can never damage anything of tantra because oh, tantra shastra no. is protected by much greater powers my question no, was no. that that why no, 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 why no. why no, well, these three the locus down. points yes yeah, three locus points and my question is that why it is considered that tantra happens to be the last bastion of hinduism 
if it's overpowered, then the dharma should be. Is, 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 oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, Tantra is considered what? The last bastion, PST or bastion of Hinduism, the last fortress of dharma. If it is overpowered ultimately, then the whole dharma and this system shall collapse. It be, is it being considered in this manner? Yes, so yes, absolutely, it, absolutely. Absolutely. If Tantra Dharma, Tantraism, if the Tantra, if the Agamas, if the practice of Agamas completely is disrupted today, nothing is going to last. Nothing yeah, will definitely. last. Definitely. Nothing will last Since at if all. You lose, uh, let me finish. According to Kotel, it is stated that Sukhasa Mulam Dharma, Dharma Sa Mulam Artha, Artha Sa Mulam Rajyam. That was the state. So if there is no state to practice the Shastras, the Tantra Charyas and everything, so how long is it going to survive? Don't you think so? Hmm. Isn't it? There is a need of a state. Hmm. Right? There is a... Of course, there is. Okay. But we must not forget one thing. Mm -hmm. That this Tantra Dharma, the Tantra Char, mm -hmm has been the focus point of attack from the 10th century. Oh, please. Okay. Please, also, please. Okay, so it is not a new thing. So, uh, the Tantrikas... Please, please, please impart uh, some knowledge on this. That yeah, I, I, I'm trying to elaborate as much as I can. The Kriya Kanda, the Karma Kanda is the Mool. As the Jaimini Sutra, the Purva Mimamsa Sastra, the first Sutra of Jaimini Dharma Sutra states that Athato Dharma Jignyasa. What is Dharma Jignyasa? What is Dharma? What is the meaning of the term Dharma? And at the second Sutra, Jaimini is stating, Maharshi Jaimini, Yagadi Reva Dharma. So there he is using a very small word, eva, jagadihi, eva dharma, which means that only the jagadi kriya, where a person is offering something or sacrificing something to his or her deity, his ishta, his guru, his acharya, that is dharma. We cannot define dharma according to our own convenience. So, Jagadi Reva Dharma, it is only the definition of dharma when it is explained further in numerous tikas. There is a term used that Natu Chaitya Pujanadi, which means that the Bauddha, the Jaina, the Charvaka, the Nastikya Darshanas, the Mlecha Darshanas, the Yavana Darshanas. No, those are not Dharma. They could be religion. They could be spiritual. They cannot be Dharma. The definition of Dharma is very defined. It is Jagadireva Dharma, which means that the complete concept of Dharma is based on the Karma Kand and nothing more than that. So if the Karma Kanda is protected, if the Karma Kanda is preserved and there are still a single person left who is performing his regular duties, nothing more, nothing much. I I am not talking about the grand gestures of Shata Chandi Havana, Sastra Chandi Havana, Dedalak Hanuman Chalisa Part. No, just one person performing his daily duties is a nitya sandhya bandhanam, the dharma is still protected because jagadireva dharma. So it does not take a massive thing to protect it. We just need to perform our own duties. Now, as you quoted Kautilya's Artha Shastra, that dharmasya mulam artham. There is another saying that Vedo Khila Dharma Mulam. Veda is the root of all the dharma. So until the Veda Dharma is protected, where is Veda Dharma protected? Tell me. Where is Veda Dharma protected? 
how many brahmanas how many children are today getting the sanskar the upanana sanskar where their parents are teaching them to continue the sandhya vandana throughout his life not much one person so where is the vedic dharma vedic dharma states that you must have agni constantly burning in your house as a brahman how many brahman are agnihotri today not a single one so this is not their fault this is not society's fault this is not rashtra's fault this is no one's fault this is the time this is that domain of time that dt time that we are living in that fragment of time that we are living in which is having these natures so for this only the yoga dharma comes into the frame and tantra is established where tantra tells you that okay it's okay you are unable to perform the continuous sandhya vandana okay you do this okay it's okay you don't have the proper setup to uh, preserve the agni hotra in your home no problem do this okay you are not a brahmin but you still want to perform the vaidika dharma it's okay you do this but all of these prescriptions all of these instructions need some dedication some basic level of dedication at least the level of dedication a plus 2 student provides to clear his joint entrance exam that much dedication is needed not more than that so there is nothing in this world nothing in this universe that has the power to damage the vaidika dharma until there is at least one person standing performing his daily duties as a brahmin as a upasaka if you are not a brahmin doesn't matter you are a dikshita you are a sanskrita person you have got the mantra diksha from your guru you just perform your duties and until then no one has the power not the rashtra nor the not the vittavan or the business class people who hold the power and money today no one no matter how many women how many asanskrita women are chanting gayatri mantras today in loud speakers doesn't matter until one person at least standing there to hold the dharma to hold his personal duties and not at all performing any kind of hypocrisies in his own duties that is my take on this that is also the shastra yes Love. Now I'm going to know that you have just uh, spoken of the attacks from the 10th century. Please in, in elaborate it. Elaborate what? No, I'm sorry. The attacks on tantra from the 10th century. Yeah, attack on tantra. Ah, okay. uh, you told me to get political. Mm -hmm. If I get controversial, that is not my fault. It's, it's my fault. I accept it as my fault. Okay. <laughs> no, no. no. But since the dam, just wait. First, of, since you were also actually a veteran, of, since you were a person and grown into study and also history, I would like to know on the evolution of time. But since, well, uh, before anything else, it was said that we were in a deep problem. We, especially the Bengali Hindus, are in a deep problem and are facing an existential crisis. So we are in need of a more need of an avenue to get back to the basics. Take for example, in the Bengal Renaissance, there was an urge among the thinkers of Bengal at the time to get back to the basics. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, Can you? Okay. There is a bit uh, glitch, but it's okay. In nineteen uh, in the nineteenth century, Bengal Renaissance. Okay. There had been an urge in Bengal to get back to the basics of the Vedic civilization. Okay, hmm. so un but uh, which was almost right? impossible to get. Um, pardon? Which was almost pardon? impossible to get. Um, but, but they did try. They did, well, went for a Vedic or they went for a certain cultivation and other things. Okay, 
Then was the rise of massacred Hindus in Bengal that gave rise to the revolutionary approaches in Bengal. But after the uh, partition of India for the last 80 years, we are in distress. So hmm. we are in the need of a we are in the need of a valorous alternative to get back to the basics or to get triumphant. So hmm. in this regard, I would my each and every show is quite political. So for that reason, I'd like to know from you. The concept of 10th century, which was talking, we are talking just now, please, be, please uh, say it, please, the 10th century. Actually, the attack on the Vaidik Karmakanda is very old. First of all, the attack was done from the Bauddhas, by the Jainas, by the Charvakas, the Nastik Yavadis, who did not acknowledge the Apaurushayatva of the Vedas. From that time, the attack on the Karmakanda started. After some time, our Acharyas realized the need to change the course of Karmakanda. They introduced us to the complete new world where the Vedic concept is preserved, where the Sankhya Darshana, where the Purna Pragna Darshana, where uh, the Vedanta is preserved under the veil of a new structure of Karmakanda. From that, the rise of pure Agamas came into existence. First came the Bhairava Tantra. And that Bhairava Tantra is further spread into the Pancharatra Agamas, the Shakta Agama, the Ganapatyakrama, the Saurakrama, the Kaumarakrama these kind of stuffs. So whatever Karmakanda is followed today throughout India is none other than Tantra itself. No matter whoever it is saying that we are performing the Vaidika Yajna, it is Tantra. Apart from very few people who are actually doing the pure Vaidikram, there are hardly 200 to 500 people, as per I know, because they are not much in number. But there are people who are still performing the Mahavaruni Yagna, the Maitravaruna Yagna, etc. We don't even know the names of the gods that the Vedic Dharma proposes, the Vedic Karmakanda worships. The attack on the Karmakanda was very prominent from the 10th century. After Acharya Shankara Bhagavat Pad devastated the concepts of Bauddha Darshana, it started happening. Because until then, when Acharya Shankara provided Brahma Sutra Bhashya, the all the Bhashyas of 11 Upanishadas and the Prasthanatri. Bauddhas were getting very prominent priority from the kings, from the political power of India. After Acharya Shankara, it started decreasing. Some historians call it like the Punaruthana of Brahmaniyavad, but no, it was not Brahmaniyavad, it was Vaidika Shastra, it was Vaidika Dharma. Something which acknowledges Vedas as Apaurusheya. And someone who does not acknowledge Vedas as Apaurusheya. The conflict is between these two parties. It is not a humanitarian ground. It's not a caste-based ground. It is nothing but these two parties only. One is, who acknowledges Vedas at, as Apaurusheya, one who does not acknowledge Veda at, as Apaurusheya. A, a, stiff, a stiff confrontation between two doctrines. A stiff confrontation between two doctrines. It, Astikya and Nastikya Darshanas are not doctrines. Okay. They, are just, they are just two perspectives to look at the same thing. These are not doctrines. 
I can say that Bauddha Darshana is a doctrine, but I cannot say that complete Nastikya Darshana is a doctrine. It's just a conflict between two things, two ideas, two perspectives. Better than ideas, it's two perspectives to look at the same thing, which can explain the origin and evolution and nature of the universe better. The Astikya Darshana or the Nastikya Darshana, that is the conflict. Okay, it is not the conflict between two doctrines. It is the conflict between two perspectives. Who is trying to explain it in a very concise and precise way? If today uh, Rutherford provided a atomic model, let me give you an example. Rutherford provided an atomic model. Do we still follow that model? No. Today, our understanding of atoms has advanced a lot. So if today a group of people, uh, suppose who worship Rutherford, they come and say that no, Rutherford said it, it must be right. Are we have the proof that he has done some, done some mistakes. We have the mathematical calculations. We have the proofs which uh, very distinctly say that no, this model we cannot study any longer. That is happening here only. There are two different perspectives. One should be right. Both cannot be right. Either you consider the Vedas as a Purusha or you cannot consider the Vedas as a Purusha. You have the liberty to ask the question that why Vedas are a Purusha? Do you have a proof? Can you prove it? We say we can prove it six ways. We can prove it six ways. With Pratyaksha, with Anumana, with Upamana, with Arthapatti, Abhava and Shabda Pramana, we can provide the proof that the Vedas are a Purusha. What proof do you have? You are saying that I only believe in the Pratyaksha Pramana. There comes the first, the basic concept that the Pratyaksha Pramana can be devastated with only the 10 Badhas explained in the Sankhya Shastra. In the Sankhya, when the pramanas are being uh, judged, they are being discussed. In the section of Pratyaksha Pramana, there are 10 badha, badhakas. Ati duratva, ati naikatya, ityadi. So how can you only uh, rely upon your Pratyaksha Pramana? We are proving the Apaurushayatva of the... Sorry, I am being personal here. The Vedantikas... The Astika Darshanikas, they are proving the Apaurushayatva of the Vedas in six different levels. You cannot even do that in one level. So why should we consider you? So why should we listen to you? That is the conflict. That is not a doctrine. Doctrine could be anything. Now... Anyone can provide a doctrine, but this is something more than that. That's what I think personally. Now, Gustav, I would like to know, we are, we are just uh, we're coming to the end of the session. It was a very good session I did. Uh, my question now, Mr. Has uh, there been any relation between Tantras and the Indian statecraft? Has there been a relation In between the Tantras and the statecraft of India? Where this, uh, Hindu statecraft. Um, yes. Yes, they are. And the relation is very disturbing. Please, 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 please let me know. India, Bharat Varsha. Not India. Bharat Varsha. 
is a land of kings mm -hmm. is a land of royalties no matter how hard you try to impose democracy on it it will flourish as a royalty only think about this think about this for once whenever an election happens isn't it like two kings fighting well uh, finally well can i take the liberty to term that all this electoral uh, positions are found more in bengal than the other states in india making it the truly the bhumi of tantra maybe that can be a plausible explanation <laughs> <laughs> so you said that where 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 during the muslim era also uh, yeah. bengal never failed to give rise to great tantric powers the great tantric royalties we had uh, raja beni rai mm -hmm. jomidar beni rai we had uh, pratapaditya we had them we had ganesh we had ganesh raja ganesh Ra raja we ganesh bari bhavashod kori so rani bhavashod they are who Sita they are who Sita Sita all of them all all of them are shakti upasakas all shakti upasakas or shaiva upasakas or Mm, even they are vaishnavas they are going for the battle with hare murare madhukai tabhare slogan and they are going to the battlefield and before they are worshiping the narasimhas murati ugrastambha or the madhusudana murati not only vaishnavas are not so non violent in nature samudra gupta himself was a vaishnava mm -hmm. one of the most ruthless emperor india ever experienced samudra gupta well can you we was also a vaishnava parama vaishnava well, uh, uh, in this regard can we ever forget maha mahaprabhu se choitanya the way nimai pandit kaji nimai pandit he is yeah. nimai pandit choitanya mahaprabhu pore he was nimai pandit nimai pandit nodiya keshori that yeah. nadia kesari that term means fire itself nyaya shastra he had so much grasp on the nyaya shastra that he could thrash any other darshana no vedanti is were there to stand in front of chaitanya mahaprabhu the nadia kesari nimai pandit dordanda pratap nimai pandit how what went south that today we are learning about chaitanya mahaprabhu as someone not fiery as he was as dangerous as he was with his wisdom with his sword of wisdom but we have he just thrashed out we have we have transformed uh, chaitanya to an apostle of love and uh, some celestial bliss i think we have just tried to forget his value we have tried to yes yes him. yes and exactly exactly why are we trying to forget his valor why are we trying to undermine the power of wisdom that he hold that the sword of wisdom that he held while his parivrajaka his parivrajaka life he walked throughout the country in in his bare feet on the power of what only just unconditional love no he had that power of wisdom the nyaya shastra tarkika maha tarkika chaitanya had been on a mission to unify the hindu dynasties he was on a military mission it was a military mission of course so i of course that uh, when uh, when when uh, raja krishna deva vijayanagara dynasty was getting married to uh, jagamohan ratukka the daughter of pratamarudra of orissa when the marriage was taking place chaitanya mahaprabhu himself was present on that court on the marriage court he himself was present 
to pursue it to marry somebody. Now my question to you, Pusta, that when we are talking about tantrics and everything, when we have already said the Dharudast dance, then the Sunday of the revelation in Bengal that took place in 1770. Sorry, 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 sorry. The Sunday of the revelation, the Sunday of the revelation, Shonash Vidroh, that took place in uh, 1770, I think, circa 1770. There had been a profound uh, presence of the Giri Sanyasis, or the Bhobani Patok, the Devishya mm. Dharma, mm. and several mm. others. So, do you think that the order that the Tantra, as a vision, as a voice of humankind, has all, always been a weapon of the oppressed to rise against the oppressor? Am I getting too political? I, I will not answer political? it. I am not going to answer it in my own words. I will just quote Shastra in it. Yes, please. Shastra says that an authorized tantric. will not trouble himself with coming into the light of society if something is bothering him if something is bothering the oppressed of the society the oppression uh, the lack of righteousness the injustice of the society if that is bothering him so much he must perform his duties he must take an action he must take a step for it he has the power but he must do it from the darkness from the way without coming in front of it that is what was done that is what that is what was done by the swami ji maharaj of datia in his uh, jeshtha prayog we all know about the datia story the legend of datia most of us don't even know his name but he played a major role in indo china war he stopped it he managed to stop it within 7 days he was the reason that the indo china war of 1962 63 came to an end he took 7 days from so darkness he performed his task. well like, so this is a very stunning info for me so tantra should info. never come into the light but uh, If the uh, situation the tantric uh, will never come into the light of society. But but uh, also if the situation compels one to come to the light, if the situation compels, take for example, a woman is almost being gang raped, and the tantric is like trying to save her. Would he come to the light? Would not he come to the light? Do you get me? do you get me can you hear me hmm in that case in that case mm-hmm. the authorized tantrikas who are there even i personally know few of them they have that power to stop it even be staying into the shadows tantrikas should stay in the shadows we dwell in the shadows we work with the shadows and we harness the energy of darkness only not light because light is not eternal darkness is eternal the power resides in the dark everything that we are experiencing around us in this universe is controlled by the energies of the darkness not light the eternal life is a bluff eternal darkness is the truth so tantrika has that power to harness that energy and the power if he does not have it the 
he does not even have the right to call him a tantric himself a tantric or a kapalika or bhandarika or digambara whatever the sex there are in the domain of tantra they have that, well, that they have that the mrityu is the only reality of life isn't it the in the world of tantra mrityu even in the regime of tantra even mrityu is light mrityu is also light nice to hear so nice to hear nice to hear since uh, i am a lightened person and i hope the uh, audience she is also also lightened on all these things now the last question to you last inquiry or last quest of knowledge from me to you host of do you, we have heard that in tantric vidya weapons are held as very sacred we have heard that in tantra vidya weapons are held as very sacred as very consecrated hmm. like the pujas also like the ordinary people, they are also the weapons are celebrated they are revered yes. they are done puja as the upasya hmm. so in this if we since this is a truth do can we stay can i say that tantra is also synonymous to application of violence for righteousness can we say it the weaponry that is worshiped in tantra are not physical weaponry we use the relics of the weapons the weapons that a tantrika holds does not have any physical existence they are mantra shakti they can be used from anywhere on anything on any place or anyone it has the power to do it from even a remote portion even without seeing a place just with the name just with a mere picture just a mere uh visualization of okay uh, here is a building here is a way uh, here is a chaikitapri uh, okay i got it a tantrika who is authorized to use the weapons the astra vidya in the way of being a tantrika there is a section that a person is trained with these astras with the respect of your ishta suppose you are dikshita in the shiva mantra you are a shaiva your guru has given you shiva mantra you cannot possess the sudarshana astra you cannot possess the sudarshana astra you cannot possess the brahmastra there are certain shaiva astras like pashupata astra like um uh, manjushri like uh, chandograshula pani these are the astras that you are authorized to use well may i know the reason behind this may i know the reason behind this what's the reason, reason behind reason behind what, what? since i can be, after getting the shiva mantra i can use the weapons of vishnu for that reason I'm like, no 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 you cannot you you cannot why have, why why because you why? don't have the authority for that because if you are uh, all of the ishtas whoever your ishta is has his or her own weaponry mm-hmm. there can be no possible need that you need to access the sudarshana or uh, the ugra nirsinghastra or jwala uh, suparanastra for your work if you are a shaiva in your weaponry there are some astras that is equivalent to sudarshana or jwala nrsingh like those things that means uh, once again we are heard of the adhikar and anadhikari adhikar and anadhikari yes uh, and uh, there are stages if you are a mahasamrajya abhishekta tantrik who mm-hmm. can stop you from using what no, sorry yeah. you, so you have the authority to use anything you want even you are authorized to worship uh, goddess hecate as well if you are a mahasamrajya vishipta so 
that is not a problem if you can upgrade yourself you, if you can train your senses your speech your body and your mind in such a way that your guru is pleased with you and he is uh, agreeing to give you the authority of maha samrajya abhishek so what can stop you then so with all this we come to the end of the show we have been graced and blessed by the presence of host of sanyal we have known we have come to know many hidden secrets of the dharma we have also learned what is tantra we have also learned that we must be the worshipers of tantra we must not imagine it falsely it is to many of us tantra is synonymous to magical powers and a tantric if he is uh, persuaded can do any magic for me for my personal benefits these are the fallacies you must come out of it as he has said there's a need of training there's a need of training of the senses of the mind of the intellect and the body to become speech and speech to become more powerful that means cost of also referring to that diction that have been translated by uh so we uh many sources on this uh for for example of uh, shankar bhushan most of that uh, the bhuta tantra when it came up in india the first class it did is the bhuta has obliterated the difference between the adhikari and the anadhikari the worthy and the unworthy this let actually they did not actually they did not okay. they put a mask like they are doing this but they actually did not okay because uh, at the beginning women were not allowed into the bauddha sanghas but the later period later period okay and the problem janata chape uh, ah. that was, the, <laughs> that was <laughs> there there was an appeal for the mass to include them hmm, that, okay. that, that, that was a mass appeal only they did the not Bhattas want to do that and the bauddha was capitulated to the they they, they yielded it to those hmm. to those precious and mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so for uh, for all these reasons when we are talking of tantra and you know that from my quest that there i have always tried to know the political insights and everything there is no doubt up to the fact tantra is an inseparable part of the indic civilization and along with it the human civilization absolutely so absolutely you need to train yourself in each and every aspect to know this profound knowledge system and we have tried to make it we will shall try to make more sessions like this in the coming days and we shall be blessed if kostov is ever is able to join us at those times also that will be my pleasure thank you thank you very much kostov for being with us namo narayana <laughs>